Well, hey everyone. I want to welcome you to our first official Thrive Tribe Coffee Chat. So the, the reason I started doing this is I just meet the coolest people um, in my day to day, and I want to introduce you today to a brand new friend. We recently met at a um, an art a, open art studio that I was part of, the Bay of Plenty Open Studio. So. Your Linda walked in with a beautiful, bright, sunny uh, disposition, and we just sort of instantly connected. She mentioned something about neuroscience and brain development, and I'm like, we need to go for a coffee, which we then did about two weeks later. And um, it's one of those connections where you just feel comfortable instantly. We, I always joke and say that with some friends, you can snorkel, and with others, you can scuba. And this was a scuba session, like on our very, very, very first um coffee date, the very first time we actually got together, we got in deep and we chatted for three hours. And um, yeah, I just thought her story would inspire you. So Yolinda, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you, you, you uh, where you're from, what you do. And uh, yeah, let's let's hear it. Okay, Lynette, thank you. Thank you so much. It's such a privilege and an honor to be here. And thank you. Um, for wanting to chat and wanting to know my story and wanting to hear and whether you know that this would be inspirational and encouragement to other women around us because life isn't always easy no it but is yeah. not <laughs> <laughs> so uh born and born and bred um south african mm -hmm. that the lord has taken taken me to the uk and now in new zealand and i'm a kiwi of three weeks old and and no, and said to my husband that um, I can't fly away anymore because I'm Aww. now in a community. And it's just really, really <laughs> precious, you know, really precious because I felt at the time that the Lord gave me the scripture in Isaiah um, 61, 3, that this is the oh. planting of the Lord. And it truly feels like that. Absolutely. But um, looking at my history, as I said, born and bred in South Africa, um, and as a, a young person lost my husband mm -hmm. at the age of 28, single parent then for about 23 years with various challenges through all of that, and lived in Johannesburg, well, in Springs, then Johannesburg, and then the Lord took me to Port Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and from there to the UK, where, of course, I've met Andrew, who I'm married to now, mm -hmm. um, professionally trained as a pharmacist, Mm -hmm. And I jokingly, jokingly refer to myself as a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> and people have different. Oh, that's true, though. And that's, they, that's they, true. <laughs> you know, they don't get they don't get the the South African humor sometimes, and people just don't get it. So when I say I'm a drug dealer, and the eye the eyebrows hit the hairline, then I know they've missed it all together. Yes. So um, <laughs> in the UK. Pharmacists have a, a royal charter. So we have the Queen's consent to deal with drugs. Right. Yep. So You've got I approval. Worked, <laughs> yeah. So I worked in the UK as a clinical pharmacist and then met Andrew, got married, and then came to New Zealand and thought it would be an easy transfer to come here. But, you know, when you transition between countries as a pharmacist, you've got to write the exams in each country. So. Right. I had to write all the exams in the UK when I went there in 2001, which was not just basically all the exams I did at Potchefstroom University that had international recognition. Right. I had to write basically my final year exam, all seven yeah. papers, and then had to do the registration exam to get my license to deal in drugs. Right. And worked as a clinical pharmacist in the hospitals. Mm. which was amazing, you know, working as a cancer specialist pharmacist, then a respiratory specialist pharmacist, then became a prescribing pharmacist, which was my oh. dream because I wanted to study medicine. And my dad said, not a job for a woman. So wow. that's something. You that found your way there, though. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> all, always close to my heart. And then oh. the visa requirements in the UK changed. And because of Andrew's visa, we needed to leave. We we oh. or he needed to leave, and I needed. I had to stay. And it was like, Lord, I've married this man. We can't be separated. So now we've got to go to New Zealand. And it was like, matter, matter, groan, groan. Your visa. Oh. <laughs> 
Mm. And, and the Lord brought us here. But I'll 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 come back to the visa story. I'll just make a little mental note of that at the moment. But anyway, then came to New Zealand, had to write all the exams here again. Thank, oh, thank I God I didn't have to do like the final year exam, but I had to do the registration exam. And the deal that I struck with Andrew is if you take me to another country and I have to write these exams again, you are writing them on my behalf. I'm not doing another exam. <laughs> So um, That's a good work deal. here as a as a hospital pharmacist, which is very different from community pharmacy, mm. and try to transfer my prescribing qualification to New Zealand. Okay. And after a two year battle, they finally admitted that my qualification is equivalent. In where oh, in yeah. fact everything here is based on the UK, it's but like they refused to give me registration as a prescribing pharmacist. Mm. At that point, I decided it's not worth being a pill counter and that I would step out and work with the things that God has really called me to do. So then started the Kingsfisher Institute on a full time basis, working with the Tomatis method that neurologically rewires the brain and the body completely. Mm. So it's it's just phenomenal. And and then while we were in the UK and going through menopause, I learned to what extent our skin care can damage our hormone and our hormone balance and how it actually contributes to shutting down the thyroid and therefore nanas become plump people when yep. a lot of that is related to, to our skin care. And I wanted products that didn't have any of um, the toxic stuff in it. Couldn't, I'm talking about eight years ago, eight, yeah. you know, eight and a half years ago couldn't find anything wow. that was paraben free sulfate free you know phthalate free everything related to that and I thought well yeah. I'm a drug dealer they did they did teach me how to emulsify an oil in water and water exactly. in oil and I can bake so I can put these you know skills together and produce something I can't tell you how many things I threw away. I just had to throw it away because it was all experimental. Yeah. But as time continued, my skills improved. <laughs> Isn't find... that funny? We just have to keep going. Nothing's going to work the yeah. first time around. Yeah. Eh? It's, my yeah. case <laughs> it's, just, it's just about practice. You know, there's, there's Edison that I don't know how many times he failed to make a light bulb. If he gave up, we wouldn't Thousands. have had electricity. You know, exactly. that, that's just it. Hmm. And uh, so then had products that I was just making for myself mm. and working here in New Zealand one of my pharmacist friends um, left and I decided not to contribute to her leaving present but to give her some of my products now at that stage I didn't have bottles I didn't have labels I didn't have anything so I had to go and find this and design labels for my products which I thought was very very cute nice little over labels Note to self, never design an over label because you've got to cut each and every <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so gave her these little products and three weeks later she phoned and she said, incredible, mm. this is the best I've ever used. Um, can I please buy some? And I went, you want to do what? Oh, you want to nice. buy some? I haven't even got prices. And that's where it started. You know, so we I produce... See. Andrew is my, my production buddy, and once a month, at the very last Friday of the month, we produce our skincare and, and send it out to those that would like it. Amazing. Just I just yeah. want to stop you right there, because I was the lucky uh, participant, or the lucky recipient, rather, of one of those little uh, care packages, like a teeny tiny little sample of, um, I got your, your scrub, the cleanser, and the um, the, the greetings. Oh, my word. I tried it the one night. So I texted Jolinda back the next morning and said, I'm placing my order. My skin never felt as nourished just and so polished with that scrub that you have with the um, the bamboo, bamboo beads. It is mm. so fine. So it, it doesn't scratch your skin. But, man, amazing. So I'm, I'll just do a little plug for your skincare range and say mm. that, I mean, you're a walking example. Your skin is absolutely stunning. There's not a wrinkle in sight. You are a couple of years, ahead. well, we're not going to talk age, but um, a, a few years my senior, but you look 20 years younger than me. So <laughs> you're a prime example for your own skincare range and uh, phenomenal products. I, I absolutely love Thank it. You. 
thank you yes no wow. it's just thank you for that and uh yeah i mean that's the difference when you use organic products Absolutely. organic ingredients mm. you know god says in his word the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nation absolutely he gave us everything we need yeah. you know and this is the contrast when you trained as a pharmacist or as a doctor and um you don't you know it's like that that stuff doesn't work they they brainwash you in that mindset absolutely. that these things don't work and i was astonished i i, I excuse me i just have a, a little bit of a running nose but i then went on a skincare formulation course here in New Zealand. And from that, I formulated mm. the little formulas that I that I have now. Yeah. And I I just, the, the moment I started using what I learned to do that day, because the cleanser and the scrub, the scrub is the product of that day's training. Right. Think, Bush, wow. This is just amazing, you know, Absolutely. and the cleanser, and my vitamin C serum are my favorite product. That's my yeah. absolute go-to. And, you know, each product, re I've really thought each product through. So there's this, it's a product that has definitive scientific elements that basically okay. regenerate your skin on a cellular level. Yeah, and I could feel that. I mean, I, I used them the one evening and literally the next morning, you could feel something starting to happen. Like the, the effects is so quick and so powerful. And I mean, for the yeah. longest time, I have I always believe, um, I mean, I've, I got into essential oils many, many years ago and the healing properties of plants. That's why God yes. gave to us, right? Yes. He gave us everything. Like you said, we have everything we need for life and godliness. Is that the, yes. the scripture in Peter? And um, I mean, it's so powerful. It's so potent. I mean, yes. even, if, even if you think about essential oils, you have to dilute them because they're so powerful. You can't yes. just slap it on your skin because it's so potent. So, yes. no, I absolutely yes. love that. You know, and the, the amazing thing, work organic ingredients. Mm. It depends where in the world they've grown. Yes. It depends on the, the conditions. You know, it might have been a rainy season. It might not have been a rainy season. We mm. don't know. So, therefore, the products have no stabilizers in them. They have no plasticizers in them. Mm. So, if I get a shea butter, just an example, if I get a shea butter that is really soft, you get a cream that is really soft. And I sometimes have to adjust the quantities so to compensate for a really, really soft shea butter. Right. Um, you know, or there's, or there's impurities in it. Mm. And it's not that the product, the, the, the ingredient is impure, but there may be a little bit of a shell that's in it. You know, it's right. just, it's just beautiful and you feel the, the feel of these products and to think that it makes such a difference. Now, yeah. I think the one thing that really, really is my little bit of a thinking outside of the box mm -hmm. is the antiperspirant I've just formulated. Yes. So Tell us about those. Huge, yeah, there's a huge difference between a deodorant and an antiperspirant. So the deodorant... You still got all the bugs under your armpit. They are still breaking down the sweat and you are just putting a fragrant blanket over it. So you get yeah. your sweat smell and the fragrance. And <laughs> Not a good combination. <laughs> and antiperspirant stops you from perspiring. Right. So therefore you don't have the sweat. You still have the bacteria, but they're not breaking down the sweat mm. because you've stopped pers you know, perspiring. Oh, yeah. So in the commercial antiperspirant, they use aluminium. So aluminium mm -hmm. gives you a temporary change in the sweat gland. So, or, or shall I say a reversible change? Right. It blocks the sweat gland completely. So you produce no sweat. So you have completely dry armpits. Mm. But it does mean that this is an excretion route that no longer functions. Exactly. They do actually, you have to perspire. Yeah. You have Women to. don't sweat. Women glow. So you have to blow. <laughs> I love if, you, that. If, if you block the sweat gland, you're not actually getting rid of some of the toxins that should be. Absolutely. And those things have consequences. Not just that, but aluminium has been implicated in Alzheimer's disease, yeah. in autism and mm. in breast cancer. Mm. It is a mineral that should not, it's a heavy metal. It shouldn't be That's in right. our bodies. 
And the interesting thing with aluminium is that once it crosses the blood-brain barrier into the brain, it's stuck. It stays. So, the, I mean, we can have an entire other conversation, conversation just about, about that. Aluminium. Yeah. So, so my out-of-the-box thinking, and I think this is the thing that we forget. You know, Father God spoke things into being. He's creative. 100%. And we are created in his image. So we have that creativity. Hmm. But we often suppress it. So in just asking the Lord and searching, it's amazing how he gives me answers. So my outside the box thinking, now this is where the, the chemistry training comes in. Mm. I don't know if you're familiar with the periodic table. Yes. Do you know what that is? Okay, if, if your listeners don't, every single element that exists on earth, organic and inorganic, mm. is listed in a table. It's called the periodic table. And it's divided in columns, but it's also divided in lines. And every element is in there. And when you look at the physical characteristics of each each element, you can tell how it's going to behave and how it's going to affect our bodies and everything oh. related to that. But anyway, aluminium is a heavy metal. And aluminium, if it becomes an ion, is two plus. Mm. So my thinking was heavy metal. Two mm. plus magnesium, mm. heavy metal, two plus. So if aluminium gives you completely blocks the sweat gland, mm. what is the chance that magnesium would do the same thing? So that, that sparked the research. Oh, and sure. then I discovered that magnesium gives you a temporary block on the sweat gland. Mm. So on a scale of one to 10, where aluminium gives you a block of 10, so it blocks it completely, mm. magnesium is probably a 7 or an 8. Amazing. So, so you still have a little bit of sweat, but not a complete block as you do That's with right. aluminium. But magnesium has health benefits where aluminium oh, doesn't. Like work. Many. I actually listened, and it's interesting because one of the ladies posted, it's in the Thrive Drive, so one of the ladies posted, it, it was Angela, uh, posted one of her favorite podcasts and I quickly scrolled through and I saw many of the episodes are over two hours and I didn't have that much time that morning there was one of about 18 minutes and it was a specific one all about the benefits and how necessary magnesium is to our bodies and our functions and I was just like oh my gosh most people are magnesium deficient yes so yes. Um, yeah it is so interesting just to tap on, on that quickly before we go back to the antiperspirant properties and that, that development, when you do a blood test and they tell you your magnesium is normal, mm, mm -mm. it applies to 1% of the magnesium in your body. Amazing. Wow. So the, the other 99% sits in your tissues. Mm. Magnesium is involved in 300 biological processes in the body. Crazy. And the body to keep homeostasis, which means the body keeps everything in balance, That's will right. pull magnesium from your tissues to keep the one percent in your blood. So if you have it's fascinating. I mean, if you if yeah. you think about the the precision of design that God yeah. puts each of us together with, every yeah. single thing in nature. If I mean, I absolutely love nature, and and I'm often just literally just blown away when you stand still long enough. And you really start paying attention to the bugs on the leaves on, you know, you just look at a, a teeny tiny screenshot of nature within a one square meter radius. And you realize that certain plants can only grow in certain conditions and there's certain bugs that can only live on those specific plants. And so the, the precision of nature and our design it's it just, I, I don't think I'll ever have the brain capacity to understand a fraction of it. I'm just like, I'm so in awe of the design, the precision. It's, it's fascinating. What, what, you, what you're saying there, I have something really special to, to share about divine design. Mm. So just make a note that you can bring me back to divine right. design and how uniquely we have been created. And I'll share that after I've spoken about the antiperspirant. So you see, sure. we come back to the antiperspirant. So then, then my thinking was, okay, so magnesium then, and from the research, so clinical research, because I need the evidence. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Yeah. In pharmacy, everything's evidence-based. You need to have exactly. the evidence to base your decisions on. Yeah. So yes, so magnesium is gonna would give me a uh an antiperspirant effect. Mm. So the best magnesium to use on your skin is a magnesium oil. Mm. Good. So that solved the problem. Now, how much magnesium oil does it so that it doesn't sting? That's the that's, that's the right. IP, that's the IP it, component. Yeah. Now, okay, Lord, now we have uh, the sweat glands under control. Uh, we're still going to have a little bit of sweat. How do we deal with the bacteria in the armpit that causes the pong? Because we don't want pong. <laughs> we want to smell nice. <laughs> <laughs> so the smell that we get from our is because the bacteria in our skin breaks the sweat down in different components. That's what causes the smell is the breakdown. So we need, with, need to deal with the bacteria to get them under control. And I thought, well, the best way to do that is with essential oils. Mm, for sure. So I, so for the female, the women antiperspirant, mm -hmm. we're using um, uh, um, no, clary sage. Oh, I so love clary this. clary sage is completely antimicrobial, which means it kills viruses, it kills fungus, it kills bacteria. Mm. And clary sage balances your hormones. Well, there we go. So with that, I then combined geranium because geranium smells oh, like, smells. like rose. Oh, and fine. rose is just incredibly expensive. But geranium is also antimicrobial. So now, and also hormone balancing. So now you've got two essential oils that's both antimicrobial and hormone balancing. For the men's antiperspirant, we've still stayed with clary sage mm -hmm. and I used cypress. Because oh, yeah. cypress, well, masculine. Helps, it helps the prostate. It supports their prostate. Oh, fascinating. So I, you know, so these are skincare products mm. with definitive health benefits. So it's not just an antiperspirant. Mm -hmm. You're actually balancing your body. And I've got two friends that use their antiperspirant when they go to bed at night, and it, they, it's improved their sleep, especially where your sleep disturbances are hormone related. Unbelievable. I remember, so I, I told you my dad is a pharmacist too. So I grew up in a pharmacy. I mean, that's just, we, you know, after school, we would help, we would pack things on the shelves and we sort of grew up in that whole environment. And I remember, and it, this is many years ago, um, probably 25 years ago, that one of the reps came around and it was all about this. Um, it, I think science just sort of start catching up with, um, you know, skincare products Certain things are not actually beneficial for us. And so someone developed an antiperspirant, but it was a magnesium crystal. So you had to, you had to just quickly wet it with just a little bit of water to make it actually, you know, glide on underneath your arm. We stayed dry all day. There was no, it, it had no smell, but it was so effective. It was so yeah. effective. And I'm just thinking, you know, gosh, it, if we realize the effects of, you know, the normal off-the-shelf products. No wonder everyone is sick or tired or just not thriving or overweight yes. or, you know, all these things because yes. they add up. They add yes. up. So yes. how do we start eliminating? Like if if you could say one change today, what is one positive change that someone can start making that will have a huge benefit? So I'm always thinking in terms of those one-degree shifts. If you, if you change... Yes. Change the course of a ship one degree, you get a completely different destination. Yes. Yes. So I'm always yes. thinking, what is the one degree shift that we can make that'll have the biggest benefit? Yes. Now, now talking about about detoxing. So if you've used antiperspirants, you've got a whole lot of aluminium in your in your mm. oxal, your your armpit, basically. Mm. I had a massive rash from my antiperspirant. Wow. Not because I'm allergic to magnesium and not because I'm allergic to the essential oil, but because the essential oils detoxed my armpits. And my body was just throwing out all of these toxins. Now, the interesting thing is when you use a magnesium oil spray, which I also make to mm -hmm. for transdermal ab absorption of magnesium. So we can talk about yeah. that as well. But if you're magnesium deficient, it's going to sting. Yes. If you're not magnesium deficient, it doesn't sting. 
How do I know this? I use magnesium oil and it stings. So I am deficient at the moment. Yes. So I need to fix that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, but suddenly having the essential oils, my body was detoxing. So I had a rash. Um, and I say to people, if you do develop a rash, just treat the rash if you need to, but continue using your antiperspirant. That's it. It's just a natural response. And I think yeah. the because it's so close to your lymph nodes, you know, it. so when you, when you go that layer deeper and you start thinking about, okay, but it's close to the lymph nodes, they've been toxified over the years with normal anti, antiperspirants or whatever. And so now they're just, clearing out so it makes complete yes. sense yes yes amazing yes. and 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 that's all it really is you know so mm -hmm. it's just amazing but let's let's just so so if you apply an, a magnesium oil which this is in your armpits mm. initially i thought oh i'm feeling wet am i perspiring mm. i'm feeling wet but it's, it's just oily. the oil so it, it's a different feel it's just a different feel now the interesting thing is i ran out of my antiperspirant one day and I used Andrews. So these two formula they're completely interchangeable depending on you know what fragrance you want as well. But every time I use the male antiperspirant, people tell me how wonderful I smell. Wow. So maybe, maybe the male antiperspirant is the right one for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? How fascinating. Yeah. On that same it's, actually, it's interesting actually because on that same weekend we met at the Bioflinty Open Studio. There was a lady who came through and all of a sudden it just gosh the space smelled incredible and i went through to deb and i said what if you got in the garden something just smells so beautiful and eventually this lady walked past and i'm like it's her and i said what are you wearing and she's like oh, it's just essential oil and it was rose geranium and it's one of my favorite smells yes and she's just like i just put a, a little dab and she says i get so many compliments because it's it's so fresh and so natural it's not a, a chemical i think i think so many people are drawn to everything that is authentic real you know in a world of ai and everything's fake and generic and manufactured and and whatever i think those things draw us just magically because it's the way god made them they're 100 percent real yes. so yes. yeah it's, it's just fascinating you know, and if you if you look at the at the sorry, there's just something that's come up on this end. If you look at um, you know, God spoke. Mm. He is light and he spoke. Absolutely. That's frequency. That's the same yes. spectrum. So yes. sound and light is the same spectrum, which means every natural God created everything has a frequency. It has a vibration. Yes. yes. Therefore, it has a sound and it has a frequency. Mm. Rose, rose oil, genuine, genuine rose oil, not mm. a fake rose oil, has the highest frequency of all the oils. Wow. The highest frequency. Mm. And if you think that your body vibrates, your body has a sound, your body has a frequency. When your frequency is down and you use a high frequency essential oil like frankincense mm. or like rose, it actually enhances your frequency. I, I can vouch for that because oftentimes when I'm, it's, it, it, it was so interesting. So when we moved to New Zealand, you know, all the emotions and the ups and downs and the, all of the feels. Oftentimes I would just go and lie in the bathtub, you know, at night but I had a big bottle of rose essential oil. It cost me a fortune, but um, I would just add two or three drops. I was just drawn to the smell and I just almost felt just like calm down, focused. It just it's, it sort of just brought everything into balance. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And it, I mean, the smell itself is worth just lying in a tub of rose oil, but yes. you can feel the benefits. You can feel the difference. So yeah. I'm I'm a firm believer in that. And the, the fascinating thing is because the molecules of the essential oil is so small, mm. it's instantly absorbed. Mm. But in 22 seconds. Really? It's in, it's in your blood. Wow. So, and you can test that. You can put a peppermint oil, if you have a good quality peppermint oil, mm. and there's only one brand that I use, but I won't pun it here, but that's the brand that I go for. 
if I apply peppermint oil under my foot, mm. I can taste it. Right. Within 22 because seconds. Because it's absorbed. Because that's how quickly, because the molecules are so small and that's how quickly it's. I'm going to do it right after our call. I'm going to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the interesting thing, if you're going to apply oils, a lot of people say you've got to put it under your feet. Mm. Your feet, the skin on your feet is quite thick because you have to be able to walk barefoot. That's right. The thinnest skin in the body is here. Just here, just behind the ear. Oh, just there. Yeah, sure, yeah. Just, just there behind the ear. This is the thinnest skin in the body. So if you apply anything there, mm -hmm. it's especially if you want something to improve your mood. And frankincense is phenomenal for that. Yes. That's where you put it. And the beauty is you get a hundred percent absorption. So while you lie in the bath with your beautiful expensive oil and it smells wonderful. Mm. You get a tiny, tiny benefit just through your olfact olfactory nerve oh. from, your, from your nose to your brain. If you put it there, 100% it's, it's interesting. It just makes me think about, you know, I mean, I grew up with my mom putting a little dab of perfume behind her ears. And I'm thinking, where did that come from? So the ancient yeah. cultures must have known. You know, sort of intuitively, they must have known that there's a benefit of applying those oils because that's what they use. Applying oils exactly there, they they must have known. Yes. So the the, 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 hist the, the historic knowledge has been lost mm. because of the incredible drive towards um, pharmacia and pharmaceuticals. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You know, and I I think I think it's important to say here that the word says pharmacia is like witchcraft. Yes, I saw that yesterday, actually. I read that. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's just explain that because a lot of people yeah. say, well, if pharmacia is witchcraft, pharmacia is drugs that are witchcraft. Therefore, if I go to essential oils or to frequency medicine mm. or to this and this and this and that, I'm okay because it's not witchcraft. Mm. Let's just clarify. However. <laughs> okay. Christ is our healer. Mm. He is the only one that can actually heal us. Yes. So therefore, anything that you put above Christ is pharmacia. I understand that people need medication, and I'm not saying don't take your medicine. Yes, absolutely. But Christ is our ultimate healer. Yeah. And and through the, the prayer model that Dr. Henry Wright has, because his book is called A More Excellent Way of Being in Health, Mm. And what God showed him is that 80% of all the chronic diseases have a spiritual root. Yes. And when you deal with a spiritual root, you will be completely healed. And that's how God healed me from a malignant melanoma. Mm. So, you know, when you've gone through the process, you've got the authority to speak about that. Absolutely. I believe we're assigned those challenges and those trials because without a, a trial, you cannot have a testimony and you can't help other people on their journey. So you, that's, you're taking that's the, the purpose. You're taking the words out of my mouth. Yeah, that's the purpose of all these things we go through, all the hard stuff is for us to conquer that because Christ say that with him, we are conquerors. We are conquerors in Amen. Christ. We have the victory already. So we're yeah. just navigating through life. We're designed to overcome we just need we to figure out all coming. these things over the way, you know, along the lines. But, um, I mean, because we have the mind of Christ, it doesn't matter what challenges are present. When we, when we walk in peace and we walk in that authority and we just continually ask for wisdom and discernment, what, whatever we're going through, whatever the challenge is that presents itself, we know mm -hmm. that we're designed for victory. The outcome is up to him and he works all yeah. things for good. So, yeah. What a beautiful faith, way of life. <laughs> yes. And faith is a muscle. And yes. how do you make a muscle oh, stronger? 100%. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about divine design. You want to get into that? So let's let's dive yes. deep. Oh, uh, Nanette, you know, you were talking about nature and how everything is a divine design. And we do know that God created everything, you know, Absolutely. just through speaking. But the one thing that really... <laughs> I'm fascinated by by nature. I'm fascinated by how things fit together. You know, as a scientist, 
understanding all of these things and you know even the periodic table that we spoke about how yeah. actually how it can actually be classified yes you know and you look at something like um fluoride that we know is going to be in our water very soon which is actually a neurotoxin um, but if you if you look at the periodic table and you see how that replaces iodine in the body mm. and bromide replaces iodine in the body it's no wonder people People's wow. immunity is completely shot. Yeah. And how, why they gain weight and everything that's related to the thyroid. So there's, there's a logical explanation for everything. Yes. Which is just so phenomenal. Yes. And, um, and when I, you know, I've, I've been working with the, the, the tomatoes method when I pronounce it, which should actually be tomatis in the right. French pronunciation the French, yes. and you know and having a son that was the worst dyslexic mm. in the thousands of children that I have worked with oh. you know as a mother you want to have the answers you want to know where to go you want to know and you've got an experience of that yeah but as, as I worked with the tomatoes method and learned more about it I was just completely astounded completely astounded a doctor Tom tomatoes or tomatis was a French ear, nose, and throat specialist who worked with people who lost their hearing during um, during the Second World War. He was working with the French wow. military and doing and working with these men that was coming back from the war zone mm. that had lost their hearing, and he discovered how their voice changed. Yeah. So their voices became monotone. So as we begin to yeah. lose the high frequency sounds that we can hear, our voice becomes monotone. The more frequencies you can hear, the more melodious and prosody and everything in the voice. How fascinating. But, but the thing that really struck me is the divine design and how babies are created in the womb. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you and I, we are both mothers. Yes. And we think of ourselves as incubators. We're carrying this little baby and this baby is going to be birthed. Well, actually, we are language factories, hmm. apart from being incubators. And and we are made differently to men. Women talk a lot more than men. Oh, loads, <laughs> Especially loads, in this house. <laughs> loads more, loads more. Oh. Because it is the high frequency sounds in the mother's voice that grows the brain, the baby's brain. And this is the phenomenal oh. aspect around that. So what they have found, because the when you look at sound, or let's talk about the mother's voice. So when you are pregnant and voice transmits through air, mm. so you have your belly and your baby can hear you. Yeah. But very softly, only about eight decibels. Now, in the 1980s, 90s, there was a program uh, that they spoke about the Mozart effect, and they said that if you play Mozart or listen to Mozart, mm. then your baby will be more intelligent, will be more calm, and actually put the speakers on your belly so the baby yeah. can hear more sound. Well, baby can only hear eight decibels through the belly because it's the skin, it's the fluid, and everything else. Sort of remember, muscled sound. Yeah, and remember that the baby is in a fluid environment. So when That's you right. when you scuba dive or when you snorkel. Yep you hear different sounds underwater. So mm. it doesn't sound like it sounds when it's through air. No. But the way the way God made sound, the physics of sound, here again is the physical explanation for what happened. Sound travels 10 times faster and three times louder through a solid object. Yes. So in terms of the mother's voice, mm. you have the spinal column, and the pelvic amphitheater. Wow. So the mother's voice, the high frequencies in the mother's voice travels down the back of the spine to the pelvic floor where this little baby is being cradled. Amazing. So that sort of the baby is bathed in the mother's voice. Now the question is, can oh. the baby hear? Mm. Yes, the baby can. Yes. And when? So I've got a prop here. I'll show you my prop. Oh, yay. Oh, it's awesome. I used okay. to love those things. <laughs> like okay. those models, the body. <laughs> so for those that haven't done anatomy, 
that's what's on the outside. Mm -hmm. Then you have the ear canal that comes to the eardrum. Now, I'll bring it closer because in the inner ear, there's three little bones here and there's two little muscles. And this is the eustachian tube that runs to the back of the throat. So when you fly on an aeroplane or when you scuba dive, this shuts and therefore you get earache. And yeah. you've just got to see, see pressure on. equalize your ears to open this eustachian tube to the back of the throat. And then you've got the inner ear. So this is the vestibular center here with the semicircular canals. Mm -hmm. This is the cochlea. This is the, the thing that looks like a snail. Right. And from and that is the nerve that transmits the sounds to the to the brain. Now, this here, this here, I'm going to take this out. Oh, it's not enough of a contrast, but this here has three little bones. Mm -hmm. So there's the one attached to the the to the eardrum. Right. That's called the the hammer. Then you have the anvil. And then you have the stirrup. Now, let me just tell you a con something that's just a contrast. So this is where you can see the, the hammer and the anvil. That's right. And the little stirrup. Where's my little stirrup? There's the stirrup. It looks like a little stirrup from a horse. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Okay, so that's called the stirrup. This, let me just reassemble my puzzle again. Um, this middle ear that you see here, your middle ear that you have now as an adult was the middle ear and the bones, all of this at 17 weeks of gestation in pregnancy. Yep. yep. So why is the ear fully formed at 17 weeks? Mm, if we were not supposed to hear the mother's voice. And that is the divine design. That's amazing. The very first nerve that functions in the body is this auditory nerve here. So when you think of electrical cable, if you just have a copper cable, it's going to spark everywhere, right? Yeah, for sure. But if you have an electrical cable with a plastic covering around it, it can conduct electricity. Oh. So in the body, that's called myelination. So the nerve has a fatty cell line around it because that conducts the electrical impulse to go from where the stimulus is to the brain. Mm. So the auditory nerve is the very first nerve that is myelinated. It's the very first that's nerve awesome. that can send a message to the brain. So when this baby can hear at 20 weeks of pregnancy, yeah. But I mean, all, the, the other thing around that, that, that's just, and I think we have to be so intentional, like once we realize the power of our words, because, because we're made in God's image, and he created the entire universe with sound, we're created in his image, and we have that same, that's part of our design as well. And so what we yes. speak over people, what we speak over our own lives, what we speak over our babies when they don't pretend they can't hear you. You know, we have to be so intentional. What are we cultivating? What are we creating with our words every single day? Especially yes. now that yes. we know that they can hear from 20 weeks old. You know, it's yes. um, that's powerful. If, if, if that doesn't stop you in your tracks and make you sit, pause and think and become yes. super intentional, then I don't know what will knock you. You know what will knock you back on on track. <laughs> so the it's amazing thing is beautiful. that this baby can hear the mother's voice mm. from twenty weeks. Mm. What they found in research is that the little babies position themselves as close to the spine as they can, because so they then they the vibration. They bathed in the mother's voice completely because this is their safety. This mm. is where they're comfortable, and this is where they're safe in mm. hearing mother's voice. Wow. At 24 weeks, they can listen. Now, listen is very different from hearing. Hearing mm. is hearing the lawnmower, hearing the train. Listening is hearing what you are saying, interpreting it, experiencing an emotion, and giving something back. Mm. So the baby can listen. So this is auditory processing. Yeah. 
So basically it means of the five physical senses that we have, touch, see, hear, smell, what's the other one, feel? Feel. But that's basically. the smell, touch? See, touch, smell, smell. So hearing is the very first one of these senses that basically develop. Mm. And that sets the tone for sensory processing. Right. So when children today are diagnosed with sensory processing issues, mm. guess where it started? Wow. It's before this baby was even born. Now we talk about you and I being language factories. Mm. So how you have only one mother tongue. Why do you have only one mother tongue? Because that's the language you heard in utero. And you can hear that I'm Afrikaans because the, these, remember we spoke about the two little muscles that are here in the middle ear? Mm. These two little muscles contract in a specific rhythm for every single language. So I heard Afrikaans oh. during pregnancy. So my middle ear is tuned, tuned and contract in the rhythm yeah. of the Afrikaans language. When I speak English, mm. these two muscles immediately my brain is looking for patterns in the English language that is the same that it is in Afrikaans and my ears are still contracting in the Afrikaans rhythm so you can hear my Afrikaans accent which that's is that's amazing that's amazing and I think it's also it's the language of your heart it's not just your mother tongue it's the language of your heart you know I think yeah. if, if you can do a study on that it'll be even more profound <laughs> yeah yeah so that's so that's why you have a mother tongue so we set as mothers, we set the language because babies have to communicate. That's they awesome. need verbal and nonverbal ways of communication. So if this baby is going to communicate one day, we have to establish the language during pregnancy. So here we have at 20 weeks, the foundation for sensory processing and language. Mm. At 24 weeks, when this baby begins to listen and interpret sound and respond, we have auditory processing. All three of these start before the baby is even born. Amazing. Now, the fascinating thing, pregnancies can be stressful. Yes. Just the pregnancy itself can be stressful. Mm. Now you add life to it or you add a massive life event. You add, like I had, the death of a husband. You, you, you lose your job. You lose your house. You have financial issues. This is not even touching on women that have domestic violence. You know, so so whatever happens now in pregnancy, now that the baby can hear, the baby can interpret, and mom's cortisol levels begins to go up because that's stress. Stressful what mother. they found in research is the higher the mother's cortisol levels are during pregnancy, the baby or the child will have exactly that same cortisol levels before the age of 10. Oh, wow. And I wonder, I mean, if, if, if I just look at the amount of... Um developmental challenges and neurodiversity issues and learning issues that that kids have i mean you can see that there's a collective uh what, what what's the right word it's like a collective burden that the planet is carrying because people are literally they're born that way i can't remember when we were growing up that there were that many learning difficulties or just social or even just sensory processing disorders but like with the new generation and I can see it I mean my son's 13 and so I have many friends with younger kids there's almost not a child that I know that does not have one or the other sort of processing difficulty whether it's auditory processing whether it's sensory processing and I mean that makes parenting harder Yes, because they can't always communicate these things. That makes life harder for them because they don't know why they feel like they do, why things are not fully functional. And so when yes. we can get to the root of those things, I mean, it's it's powerful. Yes. And just giving parents hope. So tell us about tomatoes and, and the – so if things go wrong yes. in a pregnancy and the, and the mum has been stressed or whatever, how do we get rid of the mum guilt? and know that there is this hope and this light at the end of the tunnel, what can we do? Okay. okay, so let me just pick up on the developmental process because these three things, as we've mentioned, sensory processing, language development, and auditory processing starts during birth. Mm. 
the eyes are closed it's everything comes through the ear yeah and in this divine design there are 10 cranial nerves that are connected to the ear wow. so that immediately tells you that the ear is very involved in growing wow. the neurological connections in the brain and therefore can actually stimulate the baby's brain so when mom is stressed and doesn't talk these children mm -hmm. start talking later in life or if there's a disconnect so let's talk about the two nervous systems in the body mm. so we have a sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system and for those that haven't done biology you drive a car you have a petrol pedal and a brake yeah it's as easy as that. Your petrol pedal is your go, 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 go. That's your adrenaline. That keeps you on high alert. That yes. is, when you see the tiger, you jump over the fence. Mm. Only we don't have tigers anymore, but we're ready to jump over the fence very often. So you stress all of those things. But if, you're, if the brake in your car isn't working, you won't pass your wall. And you'll be in deep trouble if you go down a steep hill, like the chi mice, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. So exactly the same for the body. If your parasympathetic nervous system isn't working, mm -hmm. you can't digest your stress. So think in terms of a seesaw. I'll just do a seesaw here. Sympathetic over here, the other side. You've been on a seesaw with somebody heavier than you. Yeah. And you can't get that. You, you can't change this. Uh -huh. So if you're in high alert, and fight, flight, and freeze, it means that your parasympathetic nervous system isn't working. Your vagus nerve is not working. It's mm -hmm. not helping you to digest your stress. So it's only when the vagus nerve comes back into balance that you can digest your stress and that you are balanced and that your emotional regulation is what it should be. Now, mm -hmm. the vagus nerve starts at the back of the brain, runs underneath the ears, it wraps around the throat, wraps around the heart, and it wraps around the gut. So when you read, read health articles and they talk about the brain, brain, the heart, brain, the gut brain, right. that's the vagus nerve. And there's a lot being published at the moment about yeah, the access to the, the hype. Yeah, at the moment, the it's all the hype. Theory, all of those things. Yeah. But the fascinating in terms of the mother, if the baby is used to the mother's voice, baby is in utero, remember the baby positions itself close to the spine where it's comforted and cozy, surrounded by the safety net of the mother's voice. Right. Now mom goes through a trauma and she's really upset and she cries and her voice changes because you know when we emotional, our voice yeah. change. It does. Ba baby doesn't know the circumstances, mm. but baby suddenly is That's hearing false. a different sound. And the moment the sound is different, the baby disengages and the baby detaches from the mother. And therefore, you get a lot of children that have attachment issues with relational issues later on in life, that wow. everything comes from utero. So, so the stability of the mother's emotional well-being during pregnancy is critical. Crucial. Crucial. Okay. So oh. we, didn't, we, we don't know these things when we're pregnant, but now you have a kid like I had with major issues, major learning problems. A, where does it come from? Where do we get the help, you know, and the stuff that goes from there? Right. But once the baby is born, the eyes open. So the visual pathway now begins to take authority and it's often far stronger than the auditory pathway. But in the child's developmental process, they now pour water from a cup into a bucket. And three of these fit into that. One of these go into, oh, oh where have you gone? The video's just gone. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'll continue talking. So it pours. There you are. You're back. Sorry, I'm back. I just closed the side door because I, I saw the, the wind is picking up, so I didn't want to get up and okay. disturb you. So anyway, okay. I'm back. <laughs> so, so we talk about the foundational skills, you know, pouring three of this into that and one of these overflows and a diamond doesn't fit in a circle and a square doesn't go into an oval. You know, oh. these critical things for getting your furniture through the front door when you move a house. Yep. <laughs> so we call this the foundational skills. Yeah. But these are the skills that support your ability to read, your ability to spell, your ability to learn. Mm. So when a child has a reading difficulty, 
if you check the foundational skills, which, like I can do, you can find the holes in the foundation. Mm. And, yeah. and all you need to do is repair those to improve the reading. If there's a spelling issue, it's probably a little bit deeper. But if there's a learning issue, you've got to go back to the foundational skills, right? to the auditory processing, to the learning development, you know, to the sensory processing, all of those aspects. Mm. And children get a label and a diagnosis depending oh. on when yes. they get diagnosed. So a yes. child with auditory processing probably gets diagnosed in the early years of life when they can't hear, when they've had lots of middle ear infections and the eardrum oh. and the hammer muscle can't work properly or there's been a lot of glue ear and gunk here, the sound couldn't get through. That's right. They often get diagnosed earlier on. But by year three, now this is the this is this is my pet thing. I need to tell you this is my pet thing. They can tell in year one whether a child is struggling or not. But mm. the attitude in the educational whatever approach is, mm. they learn. Leave them. They will catch up. They oh, don't. Oh, yes, that they was don't. such a frustration for us because no no one knows your child the way you do. And I knew from very, very early on, something is not right. Yes. Our son is off the charts intelligent. But I, like I said to you the other day, we're struggling with basic, like how do I tie my shoe or basic basic skills. Yes. But in the schools, because they, they can keep up with the schoolwork, but you can clearly tell something's amiss behaviorally or you can see that they're just struggling with something and you, you can't quite put your finger on it. Yes. They're in the teacher's care the entire day. So any teacher worth their salt should say, hey, maybe have this checked out. Because we're a team, right? It takes a village to raise a healthy, well-balanced human. It takes yes. all of us. So I can only go on what I see at home. I don't see him at, at school. And she can only go with what she sees at school because she doesn't see him at home. But you can see... Yes. Hmm, something's not quite firing the way it should. But the, the entire attitude was like, oh, no, he's fine. They're fine. They're all fine. And yeah. so by the time they're 13 or 14 or 15, now you sit with a massive problem because those yeah. foundational building blocks we've now tried to build and the entire Jenga tower is full of holes and it's going to come crashing down. And yes, and, and you're so right. It depends where the holes are. Yes. How, how high you can build your Jenga tower. Exactly. For some, it's only a little tower before it collapses. Mm. So you see it in a child that is five, six, seven years old. Mm. The child that is really intelligent, that have learned to lip read and are really bright, you get a much higher tower that collapses when they go to high school. Exactly. Or you get the child that can build a really high tower mm. and a child that I worked with, Number one in the class, primary school years, secondary year, second, third, high school, fifth in the class, university flunk all his, his, mm -hmm. his exams mm -hmm. because the, the foundation has holes in it. And I think they and learn to compensate. I think they yes. learn how to compensate for the things yes. that they're not strong. Yes. I mean, I did it, even if I take myself as, as an example, um, with piano, piano playing. So I could never read music, uh, but I played by ear. But it only took me so far. And then you can see, oh, something's a mess. You can sort of fake it for a while, but then you yeah. can't actually build higher because there's a foundational yeah. issue. So, yes. and I think they just figure out a way to, to try and manage it, but then you can only go that far. Yes, yes. And, that, and that's absolutely correct. So to be able to repair all of this stuff, mm -hmm. you need to know where the holes are in the foundation and how big they are. Yeah, And that's the kind of assessments that I do. So the mm. assessments that I do gives us windows unto the brain. Right. So how does the brain respond to sound? Because that's your sensory processing. Mm. That's where it starts. That's the key thing. And how is your visual processing? So I have equipment that actually tracks the eye movements during reading. Right. Because the, the eyes are direct are connected to the prefrontal cortex and 100%. your eye movements determine whether you can file things and find them again. You know, you read wow. something and you go, 
uh, so in which year was this discovered? And you go, uh, I don't know. Processing, yeah. <laughs> because of all of those things. And then the cognitive skills, you know, which of the skills are causing the learning and the reading difficulty? Mm. But the fascinating thing is that the brain can grow. Yes. You know, in the 1990s or earlier than that, Dr. Tomatis knew about neuroplasticity, but it was never shouted from the rooftops. Mm. The one person that shouted this from the rooftops was Dr. Norman Deutsch, who is a, a Canadian neurosurgeon. And in 1996, he published his book, uh, The Brain's Way of Healing. Right. And in this book, this book became a New York Times bestseller. The description from the New York Times was neuroplastic healing is mind bending. Yeah, absolutely. Chapter, chapter eight in this book was dedicated to Dr. Tomatis, oh. who did all his research, all his development in the 1950s, 1960s. Sort of and quietly really, under the radar, not shouting it, not really sharing yes. it. But it was there. Yes. Wow. It was there. Amazing. And it and it is still it is still phenomenal. Now, when he designed and he developed what he then called the electronic ear, mm -hmm. which basically mimics everything that happens here, and it mimics what happened in utero. He mm -hmm. got a gold, he got a gold medal at a technical innovation Amazing. hub for the electronic ear. So what he basically developed retrains the ear and it retrains your neurological processes so wow. that what you missed in utero can be redone later on. That's because right. You know, and that's neuroplasticity. So if you cut yourself, your hand, if it's stitched up, will heal. Within seven to 10 days, they take the stitches out. Now right. the brain, the brain can grow, but it grows extremely slowly. So if you have injured yourself and you have had an accident and you had a brain injury, they would just say, sorry, that's it. You've lost some brain cells and now you've got to live with it for the rest of your life. It's Nobody did not... anything about it. No. But Dr. Tomatis discovered that if you give the brain the correct stimulation in the correct order and enough of it, you can restore stuff. And absolutely. That, absolutely. And I discovered um, Dr. Caroline Leaf probably about 10 years ago. And I, hmm. I watched a video where she she actually showed the brain scan of the, the, the neurons before, sort of looking like they were dying. And after, after they did some treatments and helping this patient and how it just came alive. Yes. And so since I've just been fascinated with the whole thing of, of brain plasticity, like we never stuck. There's, there's no situation you can find yourself in that there's not a way through. Yes. Um, yes. And it, it's just a matter of finding the correct help, being super intentional with your thoughts, because the moment we tell ourselves, oh, I can't do that, or I am this, or I am that, that sort of shuts down the whole creative process of, no, we're never stuck. We just have to find a way around this obstacle or over it or under it or, or whatever you yeah. know the, the case may be. But there's so much help available. And I, I said to you the other day when we discovered that our son had um, an auditory processing issue, the burn conduction, I, I've never even heard about that treatment, but when we started in, in on that, because we had graphs that sort of tracked the initial testing and it was just, it was actually yeah. quite concerning the state he was in. But within a matter of six months, every time we redid the tests, how that, that, that whole graph was just improving and you could see it in his behavior. You could yeah. see it in the way he was starting to process things, how he was just calmer more focused and it was mainly through sound so he listened to so the frequency he wasn't really able to hear funny enough was mother's voice that sort of range so they lowered the frequencies he was listening to to um to focus on sort of uh Gregorian chants but while he was listening he also had to move and it's exactly what you say about that eye tracking because they hung tennis balls from the ceiling so he had to stand on a balancing pad and 
swing the ball, standing still. Yeah. So his, his eyes were moving. Yeah. And, and it's simple. It's not it's not rocket science. It's simple things. Mm -hmm. But like you said, when the right things are done in the right order for the right amount of time, the results are mind-blowing. I do not exactly. know where he would have been if we didn't invest in so we did ILS. I didn't know that there was tomatoes um, available in the country at that point, but um, I mean, he was seven and a half when we did it, and he's now thirteen years old. But the the transformation is permanent. It it honestly will blow your mind if you yes. if you're open to the solutions and if you if you're looking for ways to to fix things, to overcome things, there's so much help available. Yes. Um, and, and the interesting thing, ILS was the, was developed basically by, by Paul Madol. Right. And Paul Madol was the man that Dr. Tomatis basically restored. And wow. this is the chapter in Norman Deutsch's book where Dr. Tomatis went to the Abbey in France to listen to the Gregorian chants mm that he found this man sitting there and Dr. Tamata wow. started working with him and transformed him as an adult. And this is a fascinating thing. Unbelievable. The spectrum of people that will benefit from the Tamatis method is pregnant mums who need to be calmed down. Yeah. Toddlers that have meltdowns, kids struggling with learning and reading difficulties. Yeah. You and I that want to increase our mental it's capacity it's capability. It's for everybody. To mature people, I mean, I've just finished work with a Parkinson's patient mm. that couldn't, that hardly could walk on his Zimmer frame when he arrived. And wow. when we finished, he's walking without a cane. You know, that's the spectrum of people that we basically work with. Yeah. But but the Tomatis method is just phenomenal. So people that have worked with Dr. Tomatis that left took with them what they knew. Mm. Dr. Tomatis had the download. And oh, continued with his research, continued with his development. So mm -hmm. the equipment that we have is absolutely phenomenal. You talk about bone conduction. So just for the listeners, air conduction is what comes in through the ear. So bone conduction bypasses the, the eardrum. It goes straight to the cochlea. So That's to right. illustrate, if I close my ears, I can still hear myself talk. That's mm. bone conduction. Mm. And your air conduction can only ever be as good as your bone conduction. But if your bone conduction is higher and stronger mm. than your air conduction, you're an emotional wreck. Your anxiety levels go through the roof. So children with meltdowns, all of those things. So when I do a listening profile, I look at their bone conduction, the air conduction, the relationship. We also test for sensory processing and we test yeah. for laterality. Yeah. So laterality is fascinating. It's not the ear with which you answer the phone. It is the ear that the brain prefers to process information with. So we know that the brain works cross over. If you have a stroke on the left, it's the right side that will be paralyzed. Wow. And vice versa. Yeah. If you have two ears, we have two auditory centers. This one does nothing. This is the one that processes sound. So from the right ear, sound goes straight there, that's processed, and aha, I've got that. That's the fast route of sound processing. The left ear goes over here where nothing happened, and it's got to take the scenic route through the amygdala to get to the auditory processing component. The amygdala is the seat of your emotions. If you've had a lot of trauma, there may be gaps in your road you may it's not a, a yeah. highway it could be a, a gravel road with holes in it and it gets stuck there and these people can fly off the handle with at, and you don't even know what you've said but when it finally makes it over here when it gets to the prefrontal cortex there's a 50 millisecond delay that's distortion go to a music mm. concert and get distortion mm. on the speakers and you have an idea what's happening so this is what we assess, and that's what we sort out with the tomatoes method. So it is just so phenomenal. Nice. phenomenal. Yeah. So tell us where people can find you, where they can learn more about you, how they can connect with you. If they want to learn more and dive deeper into this topic. 
Yes, well, I live in Omakaroa and my clinic is in Omakaroa. In fact, this is the clinic. Okay. And we grow the brain not only through the ears, but also through the eyes and also through the body. So I coach the parents in what they need to do mm. with the children. Spider I'll give you my link for my website and I'll give you um, a contact form where people, if they Fantastic. take on that, they can make contact. I do a 15 minute free phone consultation. Oh, brilliant. And if they would like to have more information, I do a one hour coffee chat, no obligation. Absolutely no obligation. Brilliant. We we have various different entry levels depending on with what people can afford. We mm. try and help people as best we can. So we have interest-free payment plans, but I can discuss that with each person individually because each child yeah. needs a different approach depending Absolutely. on what it is that we are dealing with. Absolutely. Well, this has been absolutely fascinating. Thank you for sharing your wisdom mm -hmm. and your knowledge and your passion with us. You're so passionate about you about what you do and it's because you see transformation and healing every single day um, and so it's incredibly inspiring I'm so happy that our paths crossed and that you're now part of my world so thank yes. you for your time love you're you welcome. appreciate you and we'll do this another time again thanks thank so you much. Nanette and right. thank you for the opportunity bless you about bye, -bye. <laughs> see you bye bye